Hey there. So today I'm gonna to talk about network time synchronization. Uh, it's something that I've had a weird fascination with for a long time, and uh, being that it's so hot on this Canada Day weekend, uh, it's Canada Day weekend here in Canada, uh, 4th of July, tomorrow, I guess, for the US, but uh, we've been under a heat wave here on the uh, Canadian prairie, and it's been real hot for several days. And, and when I say real hot, I mean it's been like 41 degrees Celsius, and I know for some people in the world that's not hot, but you know, for us Northerners here in, in Canada, it's it's hot for us. That's hot. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to get a video out, and uh, so we're gonna talk about network time synchronization. So um, there's a couple of different ways that you can synchronize time across you know computers on your home network, devices on your home network, or an organization might synchronize time across devices uh, on their network. Uh, but the first question is probably, why do you want to have accurate time? Well, if you're like me, you've probably got lots of different clocks in your house, and they all read, you know, one to five minutes different than each one, right? Um, so depending on which clock you're looking at, it might be, you know, a few minutes ahead or a few minutes behind. It just depends. On a computer network, that's not so good. You want all devices to be in time sync, uh, to be in sync with their time. Because if you're ever doing some kind of investigation or looking into logs of these devices, you're not going to have an accurate order of events if the time's off, right? Um, I mean, yeah, you can do things like calculate an offset, but that becomes very complicated. It's honestly just a lot better if every device is synchronized with its time, and that way the order of events can be very clear, especially if you're you're sending logs to like a, a seam of some kind, right? Um, it's just it's it's just better to have every device giving you accurate time so that you know what's going on when you're looking at records of what's happened on the network. So, and of course at home, people like me, we just like to have accurate time on everything so that we know what time it really is, not what the time is on three or four different clocks around the house. All right, so time synchronization protocols. There's three that I want to tell you about. The first one is network time protocol. Now, this is the oldest and most common one and probably the one that you know and I've heard of. It's, uh, it gives you uh, microsecond accuracy, uses UDP port 123. Um, there are all kinds of public internet NTP servers that you can use to get your time synchronization from. Um, if you go to pool.ntp.org, you can find the pools of, of time servers or go by geography to find one in your local area. But NTP is very common, used all over the place. An NTP is based on the idea of stratums. So a stratum zero device in an NTP architecture is the authoritative source. It's the atomic clock. It's the it's the GPS. It's the it's the official government time um, for for where you are. Um, and from that authoritative source, stratum zero, clients below it, stratum one, will get their time synchronized, and then. Clients below stratum one at stratum two will get their time from the stratum one devices. And then the stratum three devices will get their time from the stratum two devices. And it goes on that way down for 16 levels. And at uh, stratum 16, it's declared there is no time synchronization possible. Um, usually you're in the first three or four levels of time. I've never seen any go down to 16, but I suppose that, that could happen in, in some organizations. But but NTP, again, is the most common uh, time synchronization protocol that's used everywhere, really, um, all over the place. And like I said, microsecond accuracy, which is, is pretty good for people at home, most organizations, and that's what, that's what gets used. Now, there are some devices, like IoT devices, that are low powered, and they don't need to have the whole microsecond accuracy of NTP. So they use what's called simple network time protocol, SNTP. And SNTP, uh, just like it sounds, simple. It's simplified in that these devices will get the time from, a, from an NTP server and then just jump their time to that one. They don't do a complicated back and forth check. They just say, hey, what time is it? And they set their time. So there could be some time drift in there. It might not be you know, really, really accurate, but it's close enough. It's good enough for, for devices of, of that class, right? Now, in industrial and scientific type of situations where you really need precision time, you can use precision time protocol or PTP. And PTP lets you get down to the, I think it's the nanosecond of 
accuracy, uh, like a much more accurate, much more precise than NTP is. And you'll use this usually on a network, like I said, for industrial or scientific type things, or maybe in a data center where you really want to have that very high precision timing going on. Um, precision time protocol is based on is based on the ideas of of masters and clients. So, in a PTP architecture, there's usually a grandmaster that might is probably some hardware device that gets its time from a stratum zero type service, and that's the official time source of the network. Then there are clients underneath that grandmaster, usually a boundary device of some kind, and that device is now the master for devices below it, but it's a client of the grandmaster. The clients that are below this boundary device I described, you know, they're the clients of the boundary device, but they also can in turn become the masters for devices below them. So depending on how the environment is structured, there could be this multiple levels of masters and clients going on. But due to the nature of the way PTP works, it's much more precise than NTP. There's, there's more back and forth that happens that makes it uh, more precise. Um, I guess without getting too complicated, NTP has to make some guesses when it's going across the internet about the delays and what time really is. PTP, because it's supposed to be working within a, a you know, essentially a closed environment, it can be more accurate about its guesses about time delays through switches on a network. Um, again, it's not 100% perfect, but it's, it's much more accurate than, you know, taking the guesses over the internet. Um, what else can you say about PTP? It uses UDP ports 319 and 320. Um, and like I said, it's, it's, it's really more for those industrial scientific type situations where, where really high precision time is really important. So. so anyways, there you go. Now you know something all about network time synchronization and you know the basics of NTP, PTP, and SNTP. There you go. <laughs> all right, I hope that was entertaining to you. Have a... Great holiday weekend. Bye-bye.